citizenship. That's a debate on dual citizenship. Representing pro dual citizenship is Honorable Emmanuel S. Wetty. And opposed to dual citizenship is Mr. Dakwajino Kiyafo. I pass it over to my co host. That mm -hmm. Okay, we may be losing Dennis again, but um, as he said, I will give a give you a brief description of our guest tonight. Uh, so Mr. Wetty is an adjunct faculty currently at Columbus State Community College in Columbus, Ohio. He has been um, a part of the adjunct faculty since March of 1997, and his specialty is computer science. He has also worked at other colleges, including DeVry University and the University of Phoenix and the Ohio Dominion University. He has also served as president at one point in time for the for EULA, which stands for the, I believe, United Liberian Associations of the Americas. And he is also the chairman, um, excuse me. And he is also the chairman of the All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship. Okay, Dennis, back to you. All right, uh, Mr. Kia Yanfo, Mr. Kia Yanfo will be rep representing those opposed to dual citizenship. And uh, he's gonna be debating on the uh, con side. We have Mr. Wetty who is uh, gonna debate on the pro for dual citizenship. Understandably, Mr. Wetty is the um, chairman of the All Librarian Conference on Dual Citizenship. This, tonight, our debate format is uh, we're going to have first the pro. We, we had a coin toss, and the pro will go first to tell us why he supports dual citizenship. After the pro, we're going to have Mr. Dr. General Kia Nyanfo going to tell us why he's opposed to dual citizenship. Then we, the both will come by to uh, counter, to argue their points or for rebuttal. And then we'll take questions from the moderators, also questions from our, uh, our guests. Okay, and uh, Pardon me. Before, we, our, before we start, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about Mr. Nyanfo. He is a Liberian national who has been in America since he was a teenager. He earned his bachelor's degree in international affairs, affairs from Georgetown University and a master's in urban and regional planning from the University of the District of Columbia. He is the principal and CEO of Planning and Development International, a planning, architectural, and economic development consulting firm incorporated in the US and prior to establishing his company, he worked in the private and public sectors, including the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, the City of New York, and the Calculum Corporation. He has a special, he was, excuse me, a special assistant to former Congressman Les Aspen. He also worked in the 1994 transition team of President Bill Clinton, his college schoolmate. Mr. Nyanfor is a writer and a political commentator and has published internationally. When in Liberia, he also volunteers as a visiting instructor in writing at a high school in Nukutown, Monrovia, where he was born. Dennis, back to you. All right. Now we are talking about dual citizenship. Actually, uh, first, let me give you a little background. Dual citizenship, dual citizenship means citizenship in two countries. So uh, in 1973, we have an act adapting a new aliens and nationality law. So the basis of us talking about dual citizenship today is because of that law. 
It, is in, it was enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the Republic of Liberia. It's called the Title III of the Labyrinth Code of Law, 19, no, Title III of the Labyrinth Code of Laws, 1956, known as the Alien and Nationality Law, was amended through the fourth regular session of the 45th legislature, and it replaced it, that the 1956 law was repealed and enacted in lieu of that law is the new Alien and Nationality Law. The law, which is Title Four of the Labyrinth Code of Law, revised. It was approved on May 15, 1973, with amendments approved on May 9, 1974. Part of the reason why we are talking about dual citizenship today, because according to that law, you can lose your citizenship. Number one, the act causing a loss of citizenship. Number one, obtaining naturalization in a foreign state upon his own application upon the application of a duly authorized agent. So that means that uh, as a Liberian, if you take on citizenship in another country, you lose your Liberian citizenship. If you take an oath, making an affirmation or other formal declaration of allegiance to a foreign state or a political subdivision, if you exercise your free choice to enter or serve, your, serve in the armed forces of a foreign state, unless prior to such entry or service, such entry or service is specifically authorized by the president. If you voted in a political election in a foreign state, or if you make a formal renunciation of Liberian nationality before diplomatic or consular office of Liberia in a foreign state, in such form may be prescribed by the secretary of state. So those are conditions. So, People that were Liberians, according to this law, who took oath in another country, they lost, they, they lost their Liberian citizenship. Tonight, Mr. Wetty is here to tell us why Liberia should do a dual citizenship, and Mr. Janfo is opposed to that. Mr. Wetty, I want to start with you. First, welcome, and thank you so much for accepting to be here, taking time off your very busy schedule. We're glad to have you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation, and I appreciate your staff and all that you're doing for our people. So tell us, why do you want dual citizenship for Liberia? Okay, as you rightly stated, um, in May of 1973, the national lawmakers changed the, the, the 1956 Indian law. And in that law, they put in clauses to make you to lose your Liberian citizenship. In 1974, the law was approved. What the law says is that if you naturalize, if you voted, if you fought war in another country or you, you did not have Liberian citizenship, you automatically lose your Liberian citizenship immediately without any due process. That's what the law says. What is very interesting is that the Constitution of Liberia, Article 22, it says that only a Liberian can own a land. Only a Liberian can own a land. So what that means? It means that if you had a land in Liberia and you were privileged to come to America, Europe, Australia, and you naturalize, you automatically legally are not a Liberian. And since you are not a Liberian, you don't own the land. But in the same article, it says that you can give the land to your sister, your brother, there are somebody in your, in your family. But the question is this, I mean, how possible will it be? What guarantee do I have that my child that I born in Europe, America, or Asia will receive my land after I pass away? Why do I have to go through a relative to have my land turned over to my child? The next thing is this, 
like any other country, Nadrua fought a civil war. And her citizen happened to travel abroad. So some of the opportunities they receive the education, they can go back home and participate in the development of the country. Now, if I can own the land, if I'm not considered a citizen, we definitely feel that it's a problem for people to have the encouragement to go home and develop the country. Remember, the land Labrador belongs to everybody, and Labrador needs all of our citizenry to go in there and develop the country. So how can you tell me that I can own property and you ask him to develop the country. The other thing is that the issue of brain drain, the brains are, are out there, but all it can, some have the skills needed to redevelop the country. So we believe that if they go back home, they can share their brain, they can share their knowledge, and that brain, the brain gain will take away the brain drain. That's another issue. So one is land ownership. Two is replacing the brain drain with brain gain. The next thing is that uh, Liberians will feel more connected back home if they can have their share on the table. I am not saying that the uh, you know, you, you need to have that to, to develop the country. I'm not saying that either. But uh, not to, to get the other person a chance, if you look at the countries around us, you look at Ghana, you look at Sierra Leone, you look at Nigeria, see how these countries have made their citizens to be part of the society. You know, look at Ghana today. When we're coming on our case, the Ghanaians are coming to Liberia for bread. Today, Ghana is going out of space. The Ghanaians have recognized the need for the citizen to be part of the society. So we can do the same. The other thing that we're advocating for is the issue of women. In Liberia, a Liberian woman cannot pass a citizenship over to a child. So what that means? It means that if the father is non-Negro, since the mother cannot pass the citizenship with her child, that child is now a Liberian. And we believe very strongly that it's not right. We believe that every woman in Liberia should be able to pass the citizenship over to their, to their children. These are the future. These are kids that will come up tomorrow and redevelop the country. So also we believe also that dual citizenship will be economic benefit to the country. We're gonna go back home, you know, and help develop the country and see how bad they can be involved. And as we go along, we can uh, you know we can uh, we can talk more, I can emphasize more things. Thank you. That was uh, Honorable Emmanuel S. Wetty. He's the uh, chairman of on the All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship. He's for dual citizenship. Mr. Dakpanyron Kia Nyafo, welcome to our broadcast. And uh, you are opposed to dual citizenship. Tell us why. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis, uh, for this opportunity. And I uh, also uh, thank the organizers of the focus on Liberia for inviting me to this discussion. This discussion is very important, very important to our national development and unity. Now, dual citizenship is very important, as she said, or as one of uh, uh, Ms. Knuckles indicated, uh, the president, President Weir, and other officials of the government are supporting uh, dual citizenship. And uh, that is their right. They have the right to, to 
to support it. But I disagree. I do not support dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. And, and the reason is this. Well, as you stated, the aliens and nationalization uh, law of 1954, 53 and many of 54, clearly stated or clearly states how or how a Liberian can lose his or her citizenship. It frankly states that, so there's no ands and buts about it. Secondly, the Constitution of uh, 1986 reinforces that of why you can lose your citizenship. Nation nationalizing in another country and pledging allegiance to the flag of that country, uh, enlisting in, in the armed forces of that country. These are some of the reasons you can lose your citizenship. And people know that. So why should people now say that they should gain your citizenship? Now, the law also say though that a Liberian has the right to get citizenship from another country, but you have responsibility. They have consequences, consequences that you will lose your citizenship, consequences that you will not be able to own land, consequences that uh, you will not be able to vote. So it is clear. So why it is now that they want citizenship? or dual citizenship. And I know why. One of the reasons is that this effort for dual citizenship came about uh, during the uh, President Ellen Johnson's Sally administration. When the EULA took upon itself to champion the cause for dual citizenship. I should know that Mrs. Sally, during her campaign, she got support from the uh, uh, Liberians in the diaspora, particularly in the United States. So when she won the presidency, it was on her to recruit bring to our government Liberians who resided in the United States. But that's fine. But there was a problem. The problem is that a lot of these Liberians were U.S. citizens. As a result, they cannot hold government position. That is the problem. And what did they do? Some were able to return to Liberia, announce their U.S. citizenship, and regain their, US, their Liberian citizenship. That is fine. But others determined not to. They determined to hold the U.S. citizenship and at the same time try to get the Liberian citizenship or regain the Liberian citizenship. It doesn't work like that. You make a choice. You make a choice. Becoming a U.S. citizen does not come overnight. It takes time, years, becoming permanent resident, applying for citizenship, paying about 700 US dollars, taking examination or test, and then go for the, uh, the pronouncement to become a US citizen. So it's not, it's not an easy night thing. They knew what they were doing, but because they won government position, they won government jobs, they want to hold the U.S. citizenship on the one hand and grab Liberian citizenship with the laws on the other. That's the problem. And I don't support that. Let them come back. Let them return to Liberia. Let them reclaim their citizenship and let them own their land back. 
that is a good thing. And another problem also is that resentment that it causes Liberians who are here in Liberia, been here for years, though I travel to other countries and return to Liberia, suffer here in Liberia, looking for child difficulty. And then others are coming from America because what? Becoming Americans and then trying to get jobs in Liberia? That resentment is here, it is present, it is alive. What does it do? It brings division. Liberia is already a pluralized society. There's already division in this country. And to add it up to another division, that is chaotic. That's why I are against dual citizenship. Let him return to Liberia. Let him regain the citizenship. Let him stay in Liberia. Let him help develop Liberia. Other individuals are doing that. Other countries are doing that. So why not Liberians do that also? That's what I have to say. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is our debate on dual citizenship. It's in continuation of our series on opposing viewpoints. Tonight is dual citizenship. The last time there was a debate on the uh, war crimes court. Uh, representing pro-dual citizenship again is Mr. Emmanuel Wetty. He's the chairman of the All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship, currently residing in Columbus, Ohio. Mr. Dakpanyano Kia Nyafo is against dual citizenship. He's right now vacationing. Uh, he lives in Maryland, but now he's, uh, he's talking to us from Monrovia, Liberia, where he's been spending some time. Yes. <laughs> so Mr. Uh, Wetty, let's go back to you. You heard reasons why Mr. Janfo is opposed to dual citizenship. Now, this is your time before we go to question and answer to rebut Mr. Janfo's position, why he's opposed to dual citizenship. Well, uh, I want to take the broader text and uh, it's good that he admitted to this very good audience that the laws in Liberia prevent one from owning a land. And we do appreciate that because many people will not have the will to do that. Uh, so we, we, we appreciate you, you know, admitting to that fact, which is the key factor of our, of our campaign. So we all know, we all know by the mission of our brother that uh, if you own a land in Liberia and you become a citizen of another country, you are not a Liberian. So we, we all agree on that. And based on that, that's why we are all campaigning for dual citizenship. So I, I appreciate that we all have something in, uh, in common. He went on to talk about government jobs. You know, this whole idea that people want dual citizenship because, of, because they want jobs, it's not true. It's not true. You just, omit, you, you just admitted that I'll be losing my land if I become a citizen of another country. You just said that. You just said that the, the land of my father, I can own it. You just said that. You just said that my children born away from Liberia cannot own the land. You just said that. This is not a government job. This is about my right to own my land. This is not a government job. You just said it. Why should I lose my land? Because I'm a citizen of another country? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're admitting to? Tell me. Is that what you're saying? It's because of government jobs. How many jobs government can produce for us in Liberia? In fact, just a matter of correction. Our quest for dual citizenship started a long time, long before Eddie, long before Eddie got to this stage. And uh, the only reason why it has come to this level is that we in the current leadership have decided to go the extra mile. Those before us started dual citizenship couldn't take the heat 
They couldn't take the insults. They couldn't take the accusation. They couldn't take anything. But we have decided that, look, no matter the direction of the arrow, we're going to stay in the fight. And that's why today we have taken the issue of dualism from, from the back to a national level, because we are determined that until the last Liberian can live, the issue of dualism will be on the, on the national agenda until we get the very end of time. People talk about Liberians wanting government job. This, this thing here is all about government job. It's not about government job. It's not about government job. It's about our right to our country. It's not about government job. It's the right to a woman to pass a citizenship over to a child. This is not about government job. This is about training Liberian for the diaspora returning home and sharing the knowledge and skills with the countrymen. This is not about government job. Thank you. Mr. Yan for your counterpoint. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother uh, Emmanuel. Uh, I, I, I kind of a little surprised though that you saying that I, I, I agree of the land issue or land uh, being deprived, Liberian land being deprived by Liberians. Well, as Mr. Uh, Emmanuel Reti is saying that the cause for dual citizenship is, well, if that is the case, then why didn't they stay as Liberian? The country that only citizens can own land. So what is a surprise to him? What is a surprise to him? I mean, he just admitted that uh, they are citizens of the United States. So uh, is he saying that a um, uh, 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 German uh, can own land in Liberia? No. Once you lose your citizenship, that also goes with an ownership. That also goes with voting rights. You can have your cake and eat it at the same time. That's all that, that's, that, that's the problem. It is about, about land, well, come back. Come back to Liberia. Regain your citizenship. You can own all the land that you, you, you inherited, all the land that you want to pass on to your children. That will be fine. The Lord is clear. I don't see why you can't do that. And also, uh, you spoke of brain drain. Liberians who in the diaspora having education, that's true. We went to the United States. We went to to uh, 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 Europe, we gain our education, and some were able to return, and some were able to contribute to the development of Liberia. The University of Liberia and the other universities in Liberia are producing hundreds of graduates in different fields, and many of them cannot get jobs. So the issue is not about brain drain, the issue is about justice. It is about rights. And that's why I was trying to, to take the rights of others because they were in America, stay in America for years and want to come back and don't want to become Latin citizens. That's it. And they say that Reti also indicated that other countries Ghana, Nigeria, and others have dual citizens. Fine, they can do that. Ghana is now Liberia. Nigeria is now Liberia. Liberia is a country unique of itself. Liberia has its own problem. Where do you know the history of Liberia? How Liberia was created, the problems the discrimination, the suppression, the oppression. 
that Native Liberians saw from one of those who came from the United States. He knows that. So Liberia is unique. We cannot do because Nigeria is doing. Let us do because Liberia, Nigeria is developing. So let us develop it just like Nigeria. Let us develop just like Ghana. Then that will be fine. And all and other things about jobs. Listen, Liberians who are educated are entitled to jobs. If you belong to a political party and your party wins that election, you can get a job or you can, they can hire you. They have the right to do that. But you don't have the right to, to hire government jobs to individuals who are not Liberians. That is the issue. If you want to become a Liberian or regain, come back and you can get all the jobs. And you don't need a government job anyway. You can return to Liberia, start your own business, and you can live far better than those who have a government job. Government job is not permanent. Six years, 12 years, those who had a job with Ellen Sel Johnson Sully, they are no longer working. Some are still in the, we are government. That is right, we can do that. We can keep all the Ellen Johnson's workers. That is prerogative. But it's not about job. I'm just saying that a lot of them who have returned to Liberia on the Sully wagon or wagon have tried to get government job and they have taken government job. I can see many of them. That's what I have to say. Th th thank you. And, and now, uh, another thing too is now you're talking about agreeing with you. Let me agree with you. I agree with you on the issue about gender equality. The aliens and naturalization law, I think that this service to women. If you are a Liberian, if you are a Liberian woman, and you have a child by a foreigner, your right, your land cannot be passed on to that child. I, I think that is not right. That is what I think that Emmanuel, AIT, and others, you know, that it of all Liberians, women or men, that Lord failed to do that. And I agree with him on that issue. And I agree with him on that issue. And I'm willing to work with him to make it right. But not do a citizenship. That's all. Thank, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Nyanfo. Um, I have a follow-up question for you. Um, you mentioned that um, we have laws in place. And the laws are very clear that if you take up citizenship, in another country, you automatically forego your Liberian citizenship. Um, but what I would like to notice, um, even here in the US where I reside, there's always a loophole to a law. Um, for example, it is against the law to murder, but if someone is trying to harm you and you murder them in the process, the law still protects you. There's that loophole, it's called um, self-defense. So that yes. person would not be expected um, to go to jail because they were defending themselves from an attack. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I do believe, yes, that um, there are laws in place, but it's not impossible for loopholes to be put in place. For instance, the loophole about self-defense I'm sure wasn't in place until something happened where everyone said, okay, yeah, it made sense why you killed this individual and let's make this loophole for you. Um, some people believe that the war should be that loophole for us. Uh, the war was, uh, went on for about 13 years. So you have Liberian citizens that are living you know, outside of their home for 13 years. Uh, and they're living somewhere where they cannot vote. 
um, laws are going to be made where they live and they can't participate in the elections in the land in which they live because they have only residency um, and not citizenship. Um, laws that would affect whether they can continue to reside in the country, laws affecting immigration and immigration regulations. Why, with all that being said, why don't you believe that we can make some sort of amendment to okay dual citizenship, especially because our country had a 13 year war? Well, yes, um, thank you for that. But uh, the self-defense law is basically if someone is uh, trying to attack you first, you have the right to, to defend yourself. So here, Liberians who became U.S. citizen, what what's their defense? Why are they uh, defending them? Why is they, that, what are they defending? Say defending what? They say defending becoming U.S. citizen or say defending because they own land in Liberia? No. I should know though, before you become U.S. citizen, you can you have to first become a permanent resident. And that gives you a lot of opportunities. Permanent residency gives you a lot of opportunities. You can work, you can work in any entity, except in the federal government for the important government jobs. You can own a business. You can become a millionaire. You can, you can, you can do anything that is lawful, except you can vote. That's the law. Americans are not changing the law for, 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 for Germanies. They are not changing the law for, for people from the UK. They are not changing the law for people from, from Nigeria. They are not doing that. This country, like the United States, is a land of law, law and order. And they, they abide by that. But we Liberians, we think that we can always sidetrack the law. Now, my brother Emmanuel said that the campaign for the U.S. citizen peace many years before. I don't think so. You have started, what, 19, 19, uh, 19, 1974? 76, yeah. Yes? 74, 74, yeah. 74, 76, right? And what? There were only three or four states, I mean, uh, states that were part of that, of that union. Washington, D.C., the Pioneer, Philadelphia, New York, and Massachusetts. The first, our first meeting during the Tobar administration was the issue of granting dual citizenship to Americans. We went against that. We went against that because we don't think, and, 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 the, and, the, and the philosophy behind that was that they, they will come and come and develop Liberia. Fine, but Liberia can only be developed by Liberians. No, and it was done also because in retaliation to Israel, where Jewish Americans were also uh, going to be Israel and developing. We went against that effort. So I don't think that uh, uh, the, the dual system thing has been for a long, long time, just for 12 years or 13, 13 years. The years part is not important here, but is the concept, the principle behind it. As I said before, if you want to regain your citizenship, come back to Liberia and reclaim your citizenship. But, 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 Mr. Mr. Yanfo, yes. What specifically is bad about the citizenship? I know that's that's the law uh, from the uh, from 1974. Okay, but uh, as one Tanzanian educator put it, the law is an ass. We can flock it to make it work for us. So, what really is inherently bad about someone having this two citizenship that that you are against? I understand it's the law. That's that's good, but okay. 
what, what is the get, deficit? What's the, what's the drawback? Well, there's a lot, lot, lot of factors involved with that. One could be security. And uh, as you know, in our history, in uh, World War I and World War II, you know Liberia declared war uh, against uh, Germany, right? Right. Okay. Now, Liberian did. At that time, Germany was, was one of Liberian leading partners in terms of, in terms of trade, mm -hmm. surpass, I think, the United States. There were many Germans here in Liberia. And there were a lot of, uh, of children who were born of German fathers. Now, if we had dual citizenship, right? Dual citizenship for, for folks from Germany. Those Liberians were here and we say, okay, you can go to Germany, Germany, Germany and become a citizen. You can also become a Liberian citizen. During the time of war, what could have happened? It could have been security problem. Although now we have a good relation with United States. But diplomacy, international relation, does not based on assumption, interest. So we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect self-defense Liberia. We cannot have Liberians who denounce their citizenship, play allegiance to another country, come back, and in time of war, they have to decide whether or not they can support Liberia or support their foreign country. That is a security problem. Okay. okay. Um, and after hearing that, uh, Mr. Wetty, my question to you on the pro-dual citizenship side is, um, why can't Liberians who, you know, have obtained citizenship in other countries, why can't they now just go back home and, you know, renounce their foreign citizenship and reclaim their Liberian citizenship? Well, that's a, that's a very good question you, you asked me. The Constitution of the Republic of Liberia, Article 28, says that no person should be denied the right to change citizenship or nationality. So constitutionally, it's our right to do that. It's in our constitution, it's Article 28. There's nothing wrong with that. Our constitution says we have the right to do it. Right. And what our constitution says. Mm -hmm. Coming back, our advocacy for dual citizenship is for natural born Liberians and their children. Let's make that distinction very clear. This is not about white citizenship. This is about colleague who happened to come to America and have a child and that child should be a Liberian. This is about, is about Namwe, this is about Tape. That's what we're talking about. So where the introduction of a white man coming from, these are just care tactics that have been used by our opponent. Our advocacy, the scope of our advocacy is about natural born Liberian and the children. You know? So poor should not come here and say, we want a white man to become citizen. We didn't say that. Speaking of jobs, in our advocacy, we did mention restrictive dual citizenship. We didn't say when you become and when you are dual citizen, you can you can become president. We didn't say that. Our documents spread it out. You can be president, you can be vice president, you can be in the Senate, you can be in the House, and you cannot hold key security positions. We said that. So this whole idea that we're coming with one job is not true. This whole idea we're advocating for white men is not true. We have a document. It's very clear. Okay. And addressing the question, why Liberians cannot come back and regain the citizenship through the law? The constitution says it's our right to do it. They didn't bound off from doing it. It's our right, it's in the constitution, Article 28. No person should be denied the right to change their citizenship or nationality. It's, it's, it's there. You know, 
And let me say something. We are not responsible for the civil war that happened. The migration of Liberians started from the civil war. You know, it is very interesting that politicians, the constitution says that the president of Liberia, to run the president of Liberia, you gotta get a 10 year clause, you, you gotta be in Liberia for 10 years. The politicians were very successful to go to the Supreme Court and say, wait a minute, yes, we have the law. Well, look, we had a civil war. So we could not be in this country for 10 years. And guess what happened? The Supreme Court sided with them and said, yes, that's true. Because of the war, it was not possible to be here for, for 10 years. It's the same thing. Are you telling me that because I escaped the war that I never created and I born a child in Australia and that child become, an, I mean, that child is an Australian citizen. Are you seeing my child is now a Liberian? Is that what you're seeing? Is that what you're telling me? Are you looking in the eyes of that 10 year old child and say, child is now a Liberian? Yeah. Another argument we have is says that where the constitution of Liberia says, if one of your parents a librarian, you can choose to become a librarian at the age of maturity. That's correct. It says it right there. It's a, it, it will come down, it's a Article 27. You're absolutely correct. So what the law says, by when you born your child in America or in Great Britain, at the age of maturity, at the age of 18 or 19, the, the child should go to the embassy and declare their citizenship. But the question is, what if there's no embassy in, in, that, in that area, like Japan? The other places, what happened? Let's take a country that we don't have an embassy. Are you really seeing the child now, Liberian? You know, the issue of dual citizenship is not just limited. People come with a job, job. It's not true. We all belong to that country, and the country is ours. For Liberia to develop, all of its citizens have to come on, on, on the table. Look at the history of Liberia. You speak of the history of Liberia. You said Labrea is very unique. Yes, we are unique. Labrea was funded on the same basis of Sierra Leone. The both countries were funded by free slaves. The both countries. As a matter of fact, Liberia and Sierra Leone are the only two countries in the world that included the Negro clause in the constitution. Today, Sierra Leone has dual citizenship. And Sierra Leone economy is moving faster. Sierra Leone are going back home. So what are you talking about? Thank you. Okay, M okay. Mr. Wetty. Uh, let, me, let me say this, too. okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead before you lose your train of thought, then I can uh, ask Mr. Wetty. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wetty, indicated about chapter 28 of the constitution. No, yeah. I said article, article 28. Article 28. Yeah, uh, uh, no, article, chapter four, article 28. Yeah, article 28, yeah, article 28. What okay. we state that Liberia cannot, you're right, cannot be deprived of the citizenship. It says that no but, but, wait, 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 Let me see, let me finish, let me so finish. Put it right. But yeah, right, yeah, right, cannot be deprived okay, of citizenship. This is also saying that why he didn't say it is what I'm trying to say. Unless by act such as nationalization of citizenship to a foreign country. You understand? That's why I said to a foreign Are you country. Article 28? I'm Are saying. You Article 28 uh, of the Liberian Constitution. That, look, if you just read that, Continue. It would also say that unless provided by, also it said the the, the condition is the same so that this is, this, this is article twenty eight. The, the last sentence. Article twenty eight. Hold on, Mister Wadi. Okay. It says it says that la 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 Unless by act, you know, of nationalization of citizenship in another country. 
that, 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 that's the part they say. Okay, they say, yeah, you can. The, the same constitution and law says that, 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 that uh, you can have the right to, to, to change your citizenship. The oh. reason they do that, it, it also says that you can change. You have the right to change your citizenship. That same, that same uh, law says that. Yes. You yes. have the right to change your citizenship. Okay? But it also says, though, you have that right because international law requires that. Liberia cannot say that you can always be in Liberia. You can't go anywhere. You cannot find greener parts in another country. Stay there. Live there. Okay, that's why. And it's also the on the same principle, on the same principle, that's why the children who are born in a foreign land, Liberian, Liberian citizens who, who born children in a foreign land, they are stay. They become Liberian, Liberian citizens. They can become Liberian citizens until the age of maturity. 22 years, 23, they cannot. You understand? That's it. Because international law requires that. A child doesn't have the, 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 the privileges, the, the opportunity to defend, to decide. So if a man in Liberia goes to the United States or goes anywhere and born a child, that child stays there. That child was born there. Therefore, that child becomes a citizen of that country by birth. But on the issue of sanguinity, blood, that child is also a Liberian until they reach the age of maturity. That is why you are, you are hiding, you are not saying it. All right, Mr. Mr. Byron, can I say something, please? Yeah, but, but, but it is, it is uh, yeah. let, let, me, let me ask you a question then, and then you can, you can, uh, you can use that to segue into, his, okay. uh, into that rebuttal. Okay. Because uh, you mentioned the court, you know, like uh, the uh, 10 year residency clause was challenged by politicians. Yeah. So for has anyone ever challenged the dual citizenship law? Or because to what other people are saying is oh, you are making you are making this a big deal for nothing because nobody is stopping you. So here if you are going by the uh, 74 nationality law, you never challenge it. So how you know someone gonna stop you? I tell I tell you something from that same law and I don't know if that is still or uh, enforced. Number one, it says here, you can be uh, the, the immigration law. Some people can be ineligible to be Liberian citizen based on these conditions. This is just an example. Number one, aliens who are feeble-minded, according to that law, cannot be citizen of Liberia. Oh, uh, cannot be, yes, cannot naturalize. Number two, aliens who are insane. Aliens who have one or more attacks of insanity. Aliens afflicted with psychopathic personality, epilepsy, or mental defect. Aliens who are narcotic drug addicts or chronic alcoholics. And it also goes to uh, aliens who are paupers, professional beggars, or vagrants. They also talk about those who are prostitutes or professional prostitutes. According to that law, those people cannot go back can I go to Liberia and become citizens of Liberia? They cannot naturalize. I don't know if that's still in fact. So in the same understanding, are you saying that uh, this law is never been challenged? So probably you are just uh, maybe fighting a battle that may not exist. You well, never try in court. That's, you, you, you made a very, uh, I appreciate the opportunity you have provided me to explain uh, this. Uh, first thing is this, my brother. The Liberian Constitution, Article 28, and uh, those that are in Sabra, Liberia can research that. Article 28, the last sentence, it says, no person shall be denied the right to change the citizenship or nationality. That's the end. It didn't say anything more, anything less. And uh, I, I'm sorry that if the moderator can put it out on, on the screen, but that's the last sentence in, in, in Article 28. There's nothing more and nothing less. So, I have a constitution here with me. I always try with it when I end these debates. <laughs> so I just want to let you know it's Article 28. Um, yes, Mr. Moderator, in March of 2017, 
Atiyosh Khosjalo challenged the 1974 Alien and Nationality Law in the Supreme Court of the Republic of Liberia. The full bench of the Supreme Court heard the case. Jalo was represented by Councilor Siri Cooper, who pleaded the case. So yes, we have challenged this law as we speak right now. And what was the outcome? Today, as I'm talking to you, on this day, at this time, the Supreme Court of the Republic of Liberia have now rendered a decision on the case since March of 2017. The Supreme Court have had. Mr. Wati, why I said that is uh, one of the main things that you stress is that uh, Liberians would not be able to re to get their land if they are if they are nationality in another country. Yes. Is there any history of anyone land being taken away because that person is a dual citizen and dual citizenship is not being recognized in Liberia? Where yep. is the history of anything of that nature? Well, we 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 are aware that Liberian the siblings are challenging other uh, family members because uh, that they cannot be part of the land ownership because they are not citizens of Liberia. We are aware of that. Has that law been challenged? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Challenge, that brand siblings are challenging each other on land ownership. So what I'm seeing to you that this entire law, the alien and national law have been challenged. It's in the, it's, it's, it's in the Supreme Court right now as, as we speak. And we are just waiting for the court to make a decision on this, on this, uh, on this case. No, specifically, if somebody has issue over land mm -hmm. and they go to court and they say, well, Dennis Jazz, since you are a US citizen and Liberian citizen, you don't you don't have this land anymore because you have renounced your Liberian citizenship. Has that happened and has yeah, that been challenged? Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy to have to our knowledge. And we have we they have gone to have they gone to court and that land is is taken from me, for instance, because of my American citizenship. Well, what I what I do know is just that we are received reports that. Uh, siblings are having conflict on land ownership based on citizenship. That that we do know. And also, what I what I want to say in this public manner is that we have challenged this law, and the case is in the Supreme Court. So it's not a, it, it has not been challenged yet. It, it has been challenged. So that's one thing. Um, the the next thing is that I want to make it very clear that it's our constitutional right to change our citizenship. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's what the law says. So, and let, let us come back to this thing. Now look, we in the diaspora are pretty much helping the GDP of that country. Now, a, a report just came out that we're the highest in Sub-Saharan Africa for sending money back home. How can you say we're not part of the country? It is okay that we can send our money, we can sponsor our people, but when it comes to the issue of citizenship, no. Now, I'll give you a good example. The then president of uh, Tonma Kaddish was appointed to be Minister of Education. She went for a confirmation hearing. And the panel asked her for citizenship. And she said right there, I do have an American citizenship. And they said, no, if you have an American citizenship, you, you can't be appointed. And she said, fine, it's okay. And she left. So the impact of the law exists in Liberia. Now, people are saying that like you're asking the question, have, have it been challenged? So should we wait for it to be challenged before we talk about it? Is that, is that the argument here? We know the laws are on the books. We know that. So should we wait that if something happens, then we challenge it? Should we be, why can't we be proactive? Do you know because of this law, there are a lot of people that are having second thoughts? We already know that. Even my opponent have confirmed that if you hold a nationality in another country, you can't hold a land in Liberia. We already know that. Is that what we want? Do we, do we want to fight before we find a solution? Why can't we find a solution and prevent the fight? Liberia belongs to every one of us. 
our children, we born our children here. The, the question he's saying that it takes a long period to become a US citizen. Absolutely correct. But it, it doesn't take a long period to have a child in America or in Australia, in Japan, in England. It doesn't take a long time to have a child. It's just nine months. <laughs> it's just nine months. So are you seeing my child now, Labyrinth? Are you seeing my child who is a medical doctor? Are you seeing my child who is an engineer? Can I go back home and, 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 and take ownership of that country and, and help out to develop the country? Is that what you're seeing? Can I come in here? Come in. Okay, can I come in here? I, I think uh, where it is, 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 is taking this issue to another level, to another sign. And it, it, it indicates that he has no case. He has no case at all. So he goes rambling, 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 rambling. Now, he talk about this children. The issue is not too much about children. The law also stated that uh, upon the, 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 the maturity, they can decide who, whether they want to want to become Liberian or they want to become American or want to become whatever. They can. So it's not an issue. Now let us let us look at the, the uh, Liberians who are in the United States. Let us look at the stats, and this would clarify really why we are looking at the figure, the number. And if you look at from 1981 to 2003, there were 95,000, uh, 95,000 95, Liberians in the United States. Of that number, only 9,000 are US citizens. That is what, 10%. Then look at it. UK, when you look at UK from 1997 to 2003, you have about 570 Liberians who became UK citizens. So when you add a figure, 9,000 plus 570, you got what? 9,000, you know, 570. That number doesn't change the percentage. It's percentage is still small. And then if you look at individuals who are, who are citizens now, US citizens, Liberian, who are US citizens, who want or craving for Liberian citizenship or dual citizenship, I don't know the numbers. Really, but it's very small. It is very small. Now, for instance, in United in Liberia, the U.S. Embassy on Wednesdays, you can go to the U.S. Embassy. Liberians are there. Some are U.S. citizens. Some are permanent residents. Go and get their social security checks, etc. Those who are there, many of them who are Liberian citizens. They don't ask for they don't ask for dual citizenship. They are content. They just want to spend their last years in Liberia. Liberia is where they were born. So they want to stay there, live there, and probably, you know, die here in Liberia. So there is no only a small number of people who are advocating for, for dual citizenship. And that's why. They, and when you look at their background though. You can see that it is for personal reasons. Either they have children in the United States and therefore they want them to also become Liberians. These children surpass the, the age of maturity. They are 23, 24, 25, 26, 30, 40, but they want their kids to become Liberians. That is the issue. Now, as I always say though, this is a matter of choice. You decide what you want. Take me for instance, 
I've been in the United States for over 50 years. Just like you said before, I came here as a teenager, went to prep school and all of that. Lived here, worked in, in government, local government, etc. Have good jobs, started a business, etc. Let me tell you, the idea to become an American citizen came to my mind many times, but I, I struggle with that. And my final analysis is that Liberia is my country. I want to go back to Liberia and live. I have family. Property in Liberia, inheritance in Liberia. So I stayed. But my temptation came to me when Bill Clinton became president. I worked volunteering in his campaign. I also worked in his uh, intern, I mean, uh, transitional government. The opportunity for me to become an American citizen was too much. So I was asked, advised to become US, but I did not. I did not, because it's a matter of choice. And secondly, too, if all of them can attest to it, before, before deciding whether or not to become a U.S. citizen, I asked all those other Liberians who are U.S. citizens. You know what they, tell, what they told me? So, yeah, for I tell you, I went to that uh, for citizenship, and I felt guilty. I felt guilty. I felt guilty of, of denouncing my country and becoming a U.S. citizen. What I said, let me do it anyway. And I felt guilty. And I didn't want to really feel that way. I can feel really that these individuals, these friends, really were struggling. And later on, they regretted. And this was not on our advocates I fighting for the dual citizenship. Again, they have the opportunity now. They can come back and reclaim their citizenship. They can come back and reclaim their properties. Uh, Ms. Sanyafo, my follow-up question for you is this. One, if uh, the number of Liberians uh, abroad who have obtained uh, citizenship, foreign citizenship is so small. What is the worst case scenario that you see happening if Liberia was to open, be open to dual citizenship? What is the worst that can happen? What, what are the fears that okay. um, make people not open to dual citizenship? Daniel, thank you. Very good question. Very good question. And I can answer that by, by uh, saying what I'm, I'm experiencing in Liberia. You see, there are those who, because I've been away from Liberia for years, they say I'm an American, et cetera, and all of that. Some it's actually thinking that I'm going to get a government job. I will take their jobs and all of that. The resentment. Yeah, I, I, I'm not looking for government jobs. I have my own comp business. With my age, I just want to st stay in Liberia, live in Liberia, and and uh, and uh, uh, do uh, develop my, my properties and land, etc. I want to do that, but it's the resentment, and this resentment here can lead to chaos. The idea that they see others who are coming in, who denounce their citizenship and coming back and taking either position or jobs or coming back acting just like they're better than others. So you will have Liberians of dual citizenship and Liberians of single citizenship. And that would be an issue. An issue somehow similar to that of American Liberianism and Nativism. And this went for a very long time. And it's still going on now. That's why. It's the division, as I stated in my opening statement, the division that it created. Liberia is already polarized. So why do you want to create another polarization? Okay? The easy what I would say though is 
come back to Liberia, regain your citizenship. Other, others have done that, found the papers work. And or, or if you want, let it go into referendum, right? To there. Let it go into referendum, that's why. But it will be costly though. Are Liberians willing to do that, spend that money for a few number of people, a minority group? That's what I call it, a minority group. Are they willing to do that? The country is already broke. So why don't you just go and come back? Why don't you just go and, and uh, declare your Liberian citizen, regain your Liberian citizenship, live in Liberia, or go and come back, or get your, your, your permanent residency? You can go back and forth, just like I am. If you just join us, this is focused on Liberia. Our topic tonight is a debate on dual citizenship for Liberia. Representing those for dual citizenship is the uh, chairman of the All Liberian Conference of Dual Citizenship, that is Mr. Emmanuel Wetti, a former president of EULA. Those against dual citizenship is Mr. Dagwan Yinoki Anyanfo. He has resided in the United States for about 50 years. He's right now back in Liberia enjoying organic food and he's opposed <laughs> for citizenship. If you have, and um, we uh, welcome our viewer across the globe. Please um, post your comments on Facebook and we'll read them. I see uh, there are a few comments here on Facebook that we'll be reading shortly. But uh, Mr. Nyanfo, before, let's say, and to both of you, say uh, uh, Dennis Jaha has a son called Tamakoli, right? Why he's a permanent resident. Tamakoli, according to our constitution, born of Liberian parents, is a Liberian until age 18, when he can decide which citizenship he can take, right? So at that point, that's some form of dual citizenship, some are arguing. Um, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mr. Moderator. Yeah. Can I come in? Yeah, go, go ahead. Okay, yeah, uh, yes, to some, to that level, uh, we can uh, we can say that's some form of dual citizenship because it say uh, uh, before the age of maturity, at the age of maturity, you can decide whether you want to be a Liberian or not. So yes, in, in itself, uh, legally, you can argue that, but only, only the, the Supreme Court can interpret it that way. But let me come back to my brother, Yan for talking about the numbers. Yan for those numbers you're talking about are not after the Civil War of Liberia. Those numbers you're talking about are long before the Civil War of Liberia. So you, you need to check your facts. You need to check your facts. After the war or during the war, there are not a Liberian that were migrated to the United States. So you, you, you need to check that. So the number that you're providing are, are the number of uh, yesteryears. It says here, 1981 to uh, what? 2000, 2003. No, I said the number you're talking about, the, the research was not done in 1981. So if, if, if something was published in 1981, that means the research was done before that time. No, they said okay. 19, 1981. Okay, let that one not go. Uh, but for our statistics, <laughs> we have you know, 100,000 Liberians who are. You can read my article. You can read my article. And check the facts. Yeah. Okay. Let let or not, but from our from our statistics, we have more than hundred thousand Liberians who are U.S. citizens in the in the United States. Uh, so I have how, many, how, many, how many Liberians you have? How many Liberians you have in the United States? Uh, we, we're looking at five hundred thousand Liberians. Five hundred thousand. Yes. Five hundred thousand Liberians. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. All right, no, those okay. numbers are. Let me, let me come here, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Before, before you go on. So, we, we, we want to say that the number you're talking about, you know, are not number, I, I mean, after the war. After the war, the population here uh, in, in, in increased. On the issue of the embassy program, I, I'm not aware of the American embassy in the Republic of Liberia issuing a uh, social security check. I, 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 I need to double check that, but the, to, to the best of my knowledge, to the, best, the, the embassy of, of, of the United States does not issue SS checks. So no, I, no, no, you, you, you are misquoting me. You I come in, sir. I come in, sir. So before you go to your audience, 
we want to make it very clear that our advocacy for dual citizenship is for natural born Liberian and their children. And our advocacy is for land ownership. And there is nothing wrong. Our constitution allows us to change our citizenship. All right. Now, coming to the next one, you ask a question on the child. If that child gets to the age of maturity, yes, the child can decide if they want to be a Liberian citizen. That's absolutely correct. They have to go to the embassy. They either have to travel to Liberia or mm -hmm. go to the consulate and declare. That's absolutely correct. That's what the law says. Mm -hmm. But what if we don't have an embassy in that area? What if we don't have a consulate in that area? What if the child cannot come back to Liberia and declare? Then what happened to that child? Is that child now a Liberian? Yeah, for the, the issue we're talking about, you know, everybody say, well, you can go and declare uh, your citizenship, you can go back to the immigration office and do it. This is not about us. This is about our children. This is all about our children. These children have the right to the land of their parents. This is not about us. Are you seeing the child will leave from school and go to Liberia to become a Liberian citizen? Why if the child lives somewhere that there's no embassy? Even we are in the United States, we find it difficult, if not impossible, to, to get our visa, I mean, our, our uh, uh, passport change. So you, you got to look at this whole thing in perspective, not just one group of people. It's not about job. This is the future of our children and the connection to the land of, the, of their parents. And they have the right to go back home and share the resources and skills to help develop the land of their parents. Um, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Wetsy. I have a question for you. Um, okay. We've talked about government jobs and our children, um, but another issue that some opponents of dual, citizen, dual citizenship have um, is that Someone who now becomes a dual citizen will be able to possibly vote in the Liberian elections and therefore be able to make decisions for a country in which they just live part of the time or, you know, not at all. What do you say to that? Well, um, that's, a, that's a very good question. I, uh, those that, that, that are seeing that, uh, it, I, I, we really believe that those that have dual citizenship do not intend to go back home and damage their country in any shape or form, either intentionally or unintentionally. Well, I mean, it, it's not our belief. We are not saying there will not be one bad apple in the, in the basket. It, it's not what we're saying. You know? So we believe that Liberians going back home will do the right thing for their country. And speaking about voting, uh, but young for let, let me let me also remind you that the Aiden and Nationality Law said if you participated in election in another country, you are now a Liberian. So I just want to make sure you understand that that uh, at uh, twenty two point one uh, D. So I hope you understand that if you took part in election in, in, in another country, the, the law says you are now a Liberian. All right, Mr. Wetty. In just to uh, piggyback on uh, what Daniel just asked, mm -hmm. the other thing people or uh, opponents of dual citizenship are saying is uh, in the line of committing crimes. They say, well, dual citizenship or people with dual citizenship, and there was an example sometime in time past that uh, you commit crimes in Liberia and come back to your other country of nationality. That's another uh, uh, criticism of your campaign. Thank you. Thank you uh, 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 very much. Uh, the United States Supreme Court decided on this case between a Jewish American. And uh, I can research the case, but uh, let me just uh, explain. The US Supreme Court said that if you committed a crime in another country and you came here, you, you, are, you are bound by the two country laws to face the full fight of the, of the crime. So the laws are in America that you, you cannot escape. If you commit a crime in Liberia and you came back to the United States, you commit another crime, the two countries have the right to punish you, according to the US Supreme Court. And just coming to that line, you know, the Civil War in Liberia, 
up to this time we're talking, there's only one person that is in jail of the crime they committed in Liberia. And that person is an American citizen, Chucky Chale. He was put in jail because he's an American citizen who committed a crime in another country. We're speaking that it's not a single Liberian that have been put in jail for the atrocities they committed in Liberia. Charles Tita is not in the is not in the hills because of what he did in Liberia, because of what he did in Sierra Leone. Mm. So, so you said our citizenship could, could help to get our criminals. Yes. Because right. look, at, look at look at look at look at Charles, I mean Charles, Charles Tita's son. He's in jail. Before you continue on that, let me go to my to my questions on Facebook. This one from Mr. Thomas Awaji. He said, dual citizenship is not an issue among us. No one is stopping you, and I want to emphasize, Mr. Wetty, from going home and doing business. That nation, that notion is a flat out lie. So nobody's stopping you. You can go and, and teach, do business, open your uh, uh, law firm, do whatever. So that issue, dual citizenship, is a non-issue, according to Mr. Awaji. Your Mr. response. Mr. Awaji, I didn't say that you can't do business. I said you can't own land. So there are two different things. If you're doing something, you, you cannot own land. That's what I said. So I, I don't know where you're coming from with the issue of business. So I hope you, 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 you get the argument. We're talking about land ownership. Um, we also had another question from Facebook I saw earlier asking about restricted citizenship. Um, apparently it is available in other countries. Um, and my understanding is that with restricted citizenship, um, maybe it would restrict you from voting or restrict you from running for public office or any um, elected position. Uh, what are both of your views on restricted citizenship? Yeah, uh, uh, moderator, yes, it, it's part of our campaign. Our campaign is talking about restrictive citizenship. You cannot be president, you cannot be vice president, you cannot uh, be member of the Senate. As a matter of fact, our chief sponsor in the in the Senate, Councilor Senator Vanny Sherman, he introduced a bill in the Labyrinth Senate. The Labyrinth Senate debated the bill, and uh, the President Pro Tem have not put the bill on the floor to for it to be voted upon. In that bill, it stated the, the Vanny Sherman bill stated that you can't be president, you can't be vice president. You can't be in the Senate, you can't be in the House, you can't hold certain positions. So yes, we, we do agree with a restricted citizenship. That is in the bill that is currently in the Labyrinth Senate presented by Councilor Vanisham, Senator Vanisham of uh, Grand Cape Man County. So yes, we do agree with a restricted dual citizenship. Mr. Nyanfo, what is uh, your opinion on restricted citizenship? Um, well, I just do not uh, support the whole entire concept of dual citizenship, whether it's restrictive or not. Okay. Back to you, Dennis. <laughs> All right, there's a question here from Dennis Cotti. Let me see what my man Dennis Cotti is saying. Okay, first, Augusta Williams said, dual citizenship is a good thing. It brings in investors and development in the country. Other countries, you know, in the region are doing the same. And uh, other countries in our West African region embrace dual citizenship. It brings in investors. M Mr. Yanfo. Yes. What's your response? If you stop dual citizenship, according to... Uh, Dual citizenship, according to our caller, or according to our guesses, or according to our contributor, brings in investors. Why are uh, you against that? I disagree. Okay. Uh, 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 well, let us look at uh, development in Liberia, investment in Liberia. Uh, let's say in the Sali administration, uh, figures are saying that uh, about $17 billion of of direct investment 
AIDS, etc., pouring into the country. And today, what is Liberia? Where is Liberia? Okay. Now, if dual citizens or dual citizenship will bring development. What are the figures, what are the data that are available to support that dual citizenship brought in, uh, enormous development to, to Nigeria and Ghana? The development has come into that country, basically has been the policies that have been adopted by that country, particularly Ghana. Ghana has a policy in which uh, any, any uh, investment to lab into Ghana or um, have a Ghanaian partner. A certain amount must stay in Ghana. As a result, development states, money that has uh, been created in Ghana stays a large number, large number is stay in Ghana. We don't have a that yet. See, there are a lot of policy or uh, uh, mechanism need to be applied into all of this before you, you have uh, the way citizens and all of it. There's an article written by the uh, uh, Cesar, uh, Cesar, what I have his name here somewhere. Uh, Cesar, yeah, but anyway, his article entitled The Case Against Dual Citizens Law. And what he's saying is that there are other issues that the, 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 the campaign for dual citizenship could focus on. Rather than trying to focus on this, I want to come to Liberia, my people own land, I own land, and I want to have my land, I want to do this and that. No, there are other issues that they could do. And what he said is that they are putting the cart before, 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 before the, the horse. Okay, so they have that other thing that's good. Development doesn't come by, by Liberians, by Liberians in the United States or elsewhere as bringing development. Uh, and and, and uh, Emmanuel can, 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 can uh, claim me on that. It's not. And what are the stats? How many Liberians in the United States who are like American uh, US citizens who have businesses or can bring businesses in Liberia will make a significant impact. No, I don't think so. And one thing you can correct me on that. I don't think so. It is not. Development can only come by individuals who live in Liberia, who have opportunity for investment, opportunity for business, etc., can develop the land. Okay. It's not by foreign, no, not, not by foreign investment, because foreign investment money is taken out. Look at the Lebanese, look at the Indians. They have all these stores, major stores, building uh, supplies in Liberia. Where do they keep their money, the bulk of their money in their respective countries? So well, let us empower our own Liberians here so right. that development can come within Liberia, from Liberia. Right, uh, Mr. Yanfo, when you talk about the investment, they are not talking about Indians or other nationality. They are talking about no, Liberia. I'm I just, I just saying that, I'm just, I just saying that if, if you have, okay, let, let's for instance, you have the dual, citizen, dual citizenship, right? Of uh, Americans, US Americans. And, 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 and they are, they, they are uh, bringing development here, investments. What are they going to keep their money? Would they not send it to America? Take for, okay. instance, take, take for instance, those who even work in the government at the end of the month, look at the transaction of money coming from Liberia, going to US. These are Liberians who work in Liberia who own family in the United States at the end of the month, every month, the transaction of, of money trade from Liberia to the US, you'll be surprised. Mm. So it's the same concept. They create okay. the money in Liberia, 
Did it send money to the United States? And I'm not saying that. I, I'm not, don't get me wrong now. Don't get me wrong. I, 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 I got you. I, I got they, you. They are eating pictures here who are Liberians, who are doing business in Liberia and, and, and creating and helping in the development of the country. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't deny that. Okay. But I just say to use that factor as, as, as the entity for advocacy for dual citizenship, it is service. It's unfortunate. Mr. Dennis Corti say, I think our problem in Liberia is corruption, not yes. citizenship. Okay, Even the Liberians in the current administration are holding other citizenship and no one is driving them out because of the constitutional provision regarding dual citizenship. Let's first focus on justice in Liberia before thinking about dual citizenship. Mr. Wetty, my man, Dennis Koti said you should put dual citizenship on the back burner and talk about corruption and justice. Well, uh, I, I respect his view and uh, he has a right to his view, but we can have dual citizenship except to fight corruption. How do we do that? Job creation. How do you do that? You have job creation, you have people coming in with processes that will prevent corruption. You have people with the skills, the knowledge of banking. You have librarians who are well trained to come back home and put things in place. To help Mr. Wesley, let, let, me, let me stop you. You don't need citizenship to do that. You can still do that if you have other citizenship. No, we're not seeing that. I'm not seeing that's what you need. Okay. And, and I'm not saying that what you need. But our, our brother have also admitted, we all agree, that if, if you don't own a land, I mean, if you're not a citizen, you can't you can, you can, you can own a land. So what we're seeing here, the key thing here is land ownership. If I know I can own a land, it means I'm attached to that country. I can go back home and invest into the country. So do not come here and dash the issue of land. The history of man says land ownership is one of the sources, if not the sources, of, of, of conflict. So it is very important that we address the issue of land ownership. If I know good and well that I cannot own a land in the country, why should I invest? Why you think that you are more Liberian than I am? This is very important. This will help development. Because guess what happened? If I go back home and I know I can own a land, if I begin to develop that land, guess who's going to get a job? Those neighbors. And if they can feed their family, why should they steal? You know, why? why? So if dual citizenship, when people begin to go back home, they're going to create a lot of opportunities that the, the lame man will have no reason to commit a crime because he, he will be in power. He will feel very proud of himself that he can put a bread on the table for his family. These things will help in the process. You know, and we all come here and praise Ghana, Nigeria. Look today. When somebody is sick in Liberia, they go to Ghana, they go to Nigeria, they go to Sierra Leone. These countries that you go to are encouraging their citizens to go back home and develop. That's why they are developed. You know, it is so sad that a, a friend of mine from Ghana, I mean from Columbus, a doctor, is an, an American citizen. When they passed the law, he went back home and opened his clinic. He's there providing services to his people. He doesn't have to worry about land ownership. He's a Ghanaian. These are things that we all talking about, but so much just and everything is right. Like, I have another question here from you for from Loveto Tube. Okay, she said the TROC calls for dual citizenship. That's correct. So why not you? Why don't you support the implementation of TROC as instead of taking a piecemeal and just well, focus on dual citizenship? We we are there on the issue. We, we ourselves do, as a matter of fact, if you look at the TRC final report, Yula is part of that process. Yula helped to create that report. So there is no way that we can be against that report. We all support it. What we're seeing, the whole thing is gradual. If the government feels that they have the appropriate machinery structure to, to implement that, they will do it. That, that is not my calling, you know? And, uh, we are advocating for dual citizenship. That's part of the TRC report. That's part of the, so even if, if we accomplish that aspect, we are accomplishing one aspect of the TRC report. It is not possible to 
to, to implement everything in the TRC report at once. Okay. You know, from my own thinking. So you can't say that we do not want to implement a TRC report. We are a part of that report. You that created that report. So there's no way you, you can exclude you that from that report. It, it's a matter of time when the government find a fit. I, I don't remember that any government saying that they cannot implement TRC report. I just know that all the government have agreed, but they're looking at the appropriate time to implement that report based on their own needs, I mean, based on their own resources. So I'm not aware of any government within the report that brought ever said that they will not implement the law. A question here too for, uh, from Jusu Jifla. Jusu Jifla is from Norway. He's asking, this is a comment, and I think uh, Mr. Yanfo, you can respond to this comment. He said, dual citizenship is excellent for Liberia. No investor will want to invest in a country where, the, where he cannot own property. That is why money will always leave Liberia. Even though I'm a Liberian, I have to pay over 2,500 to register in business because I have a foreign passport. It costs $150 to register a company when you have a Liberian passport. Liberia will develop faster with dual citizenship. Your comment, Mr. Yanfo. Uh, uh, therefore, because if you say that, that, that that would bring development and the reason development is not coming to Liberia is because uh, people don't own land, etc. Then look at those who are here in Liberia, who invest, who are investing in Liberia, who are making thousands, millions of dollars in Liberia. Why? They don't own land. They don't own land at all. They, 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 a lot of the big businesses in Liberia are not owned by Liberians, but owned by foreigners. So why it is that land ownership is necessary for development? Abraham uh, 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 Emmanuel is saying that land uh, ownership of land is important. Okay, I think Brother Emmanuel uh, has relatives in Liberia. Or I don't know whether he's an American citizen or not, but I think he has relatives in Liberia. Or, or others who have US citizens have relatives in Liberia, have brothers and sisters in Liberia. So why not you transfer? If the, that is family land, it's your land, and you have a brother, you have a sister in Liberia, why not do you put that in charge of that person and develop that? Create a, either a business or hotel, et cetera, and that investment. You can uh, take the proceed. You can stick something like to the United States. Some can be in Liberia. You can hire, you can employ people. So why not? You don't, you don't need to have a dual citizenship in order to invest. You don't need a dual citizen in order to develop. To, those who are American citizens, they can come to Liberia. They can do anything except they can't vote. They can't own property. That's all. They can own big time government jobs. And, and, and I don't know who have. Um, or just like other people who are saying, don't, don't, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> that was some people are advocating. They have they could do that. So uh, okay, Miss, Mr. Mm -hmm. Moderator, before you go on, can I say one thing? Can I inject something? Yeah. No, before you inject that, because this is uh, what I'm going to read on Facebook so you can just use the two. Williams or uh, Prince. Prince William from nearby Tennessee State, that's Johnson City, say, Emmanuel, there are high level government officials in Liberia with other country citizenship working currently in Liberia. These individuals owning lands and property in Liberia, no one stopping them. Are you saying? that based on the current law, that these individuals are violating the laws of Liberia. So you can, you can join that with your response. Thank you very much. Uh, my brother made a very, very good point that he said it is okay that the land that I own, I should pass it on to my sister and my brothers. It is okay. It is okay that my child that's in America I have an American passport, I have an American citizenship. My child that is in Sweden, my child that is in Australia cannot own the land. So it's okay 
that let me pass the nail on to my sisters and brothers. But the question is this, what's the guarantee that my sister and brothers will give that land to my child if I'm, if I, if I'm in heaven? What are you seeing? Is that what you call development? Is that what you're seeing? You are admitting to what we're advocating. That's what we are advocating. We are advocating to prevent that. We are advocating that because I have dual citizenship, I should not pass the land onto my brother or sister. I should have that my child to come and take that land if I'm not around. That's what we're advocating. But to you, it's okay. It's, 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 it's fine that my child should take the, the land that I own. I should pass it on to my sister and brothers and not to my children. It's okay. It's not okay to us. That's what we're trying to prevent. I appreciate you really making the issue very good for us. You are explaining it better than, 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 than we are doing. You are admitting on the issue of land ownership that we should give the land to our, to our, to our family. Now, coming to the issue of poor owning land, yes, owning a Liberian, according to our law, is entitled to own real property in the Republic of Liberia. Only a Liberian. So if you are not a Liberian and you own the land and the government decides to implement the law, they will take the law, they will take the land from you. That's the law. Oh, let and, me and, 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 and my brother is suggesting that you should give the land to your sisters, your uncles, your nephews, your nieces in Liberia. <laughs> Which, which we are we are we are rejecting. We believe that my child should return and own that land. So yes, if you're not a Liberian, you cannot own a land. That's the law. Well, so according to Prince William, those who are owning land now in Liberia and are, they are violating the constitution. Yes, they are. And, and at the appropriate time, if you have a government that want to implement that, they will take the land from them. That's correct. It's, it's, I'm not making anything up. It's it's in the book. Only a Liberian can own a land in the Republic of Liberia. I think, let me come in here, uh, if, if, if I may. Sure. I think this, this issue here, we, we are making it more difficult than why it is. You see, the issue here is one side want to have their cake and eat it, like, just like American people say, want to have your cake and eat it at the same time, probably. You want to have your cake with all the trappings, with all the acid, and eat at the same time. It doesn't work that way all the time. You made a decision. You decided to relinquish your Liberian citizenship and get foreign citizenship. That's the issue. And they, they provided processes that which you can regain your Liberian citizenship by. You don't want to follow that. And then you are advocating, oh, well, why should I give my land to my brother and sister? What guarantee do I have that when I go to heaven, that my child will, will, will have that? Your child was born in a foreign country, I guess so, or United States, was a baby, five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, had all the time. If you were an American citizen at that time, you could probably have said, you know what? By the time you are 21, 21 years old, 20 years old, I would advise you to go back to Liberia and regain your citizen or go to the embassy and declare that I want to be an American or Liberian citizen. You can do that. So the land you're talking about will be given to your son. Now, if you have issue with your own relatives in, in regard to your property, that is something different. That is some problem that is personal. But you can't say, though, that why should they deny me of my rights to own my property? Deny my child to own my property? But the fact is that you deny yourself. And now you're putting the blame on other and you blame other people. No, you don't. When you make a decision, you abide by the consequences. Right. That's it. That's the problem we have in. These guys don't want to follow the law. They don't want to follow the consequences and they are, you know, doing nah, 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 nah. That's what they say. I could say it that way. <laughs> you know, they are crying wolves. Daniel? 
Yeah, Mr. Uh, uh, Mar before you come back, can I just inject something? <laughs> I know, my guy. Okay, okay. Let's speak, let's speak <laughs> about it. He, the focus here, my brother, is missing is that the, you, you keep them with us. We, do, we keep them with us and our children. That's the point. You're missing. That's the point you are missing. You keep them with us, us. We need to go back and change our citizenship. What if my child at the age of 21 was not available to, to, to make a decision? Are you seeing a child cannot own the land? Why, why are you putting the extra burden on my child? At least there's one thing that you are doing for us on this debate. You are confirming that there is a law in the Republic of Liberia that states that if you own, you if you are not a Liberian, you cannot own a land. And we do appreciate your uh, your, your statement and 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 and, and um, on this issue that you are confirming. Why there is in the book, in my word. It's so, not me saying it. It's the law saying it. That, what, what, so, what I'm saying to so you, you don't make me that, I'm supporting you. My child has the right to own the land that I have. I don't have to go to my brother and sister. I don't have to. What you don't understand is that that will impair development. If my child, who is an engineer, a doctor, you know, that have all the skills, know that the land of the father they can't own that land. How you think a child that was born in America will go back and develop the land after the, 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 the father or mother is in heaven? Think about it. What happened to your land when you when you when you, when you are not here? Think about it. Liberia exists from now to the end of time. Like only a generation will support, I mean, will develop Liberia. You will pass, your children will come and go on. So this is not about me. This is about my children and my children's children. You admitting, you agree that there's a law in Liberia that says if you are foreigner, I mean, if, if, if not in Liberia, you can't own the land. Okay. And that's what we're advocating. That's our point. And why don't you see it? Okay. Um, so I have a follow-up question from Mr. Nyanfo. He mentioned that Lebanese and Indians are in Liberia and they are doing business and investing money and making money. Um, because technically Lebanese um, and Indians cannot own land in Liberia and maybe they are renting land, they're renting it for a high amount. And when you are renting, you're at the risk of the landowner. If they decide to crease it, to increase it um, drastically at the end of the lease, you have no say. So as a speaking as a business person, you know, the supermarkets that they own, it shows in the pricing of their goods. It's astronomically uh, expensive. If you have Liberians in the diaspora who want to come now and open a supermarket on land that they own, that their parents passed down to them, you don't think they would be able to provide goods for the Liberian people at a lower rate? Oh, uh, that, they could, cool, that could. Cool. But see, the problem is, it's not too much that the, the investors or the business person in charge, the fact is that there is not a price control. That's the issue. That's the issue where an individual can say, I'm selling this good here, this good for this amount. There is no national price control. So you can't blame that on the Lebanese, or you can't blame them, bring down the foreigner or the Indians. You cannot. Can there the be price Indian. control in a capital capitalist? There is not, price, there is not, there is not now, now this is not I, I'm not saying that the gov the present government, because the present government has been for eight months or eight months or nine months, etc. It's not a price control. It has been for a long time. Okay, there's no price control. For for instance, this is this is for gasoline. Okay, for gasoline, and a uh, uh, gallon of gasoline uh, is uh, what five five forty, five forty, uh, and five sixty, five forty for gasoline, five sixty for for fuel, right? That price has been on for a long time, but at the same time, though, they have said that uh, 
price for transportation should be decreased. They said at one period of time. And I thought that oh, that was great. That was great that the price of transportation is reduced. But at the same time though, the gasoline price has not. It stayed the same price for the past two months. I would have thought that they would have tried to lower it, but it is not. And what an individual who owns gasoline in, in Liberia, total gas station is foreign owned. And, and the others are foreign owned, except uh, one or two Aminita, Liberian owned, and another one. Okay? But they're all the same price. They, they, they get the same price. All right. So, so it's just a matter of a price control. Okay. Uh oh, Mr. Webby, I, I have a. Uh... A question here on Facebook from Doa Hine. It says, countries that you may mention of that uh, have dual citizenship because they have strong laws and they have a strong parliament or legislative branch. So Labrador doesn't have that. So if you have dual citizenship in the presence of those weak laws and also not strong uh, or judicial legislative branch, you're going to have problems. Uh, I mean, if you say strong or not strong, it's, it's relative to his thinking. But uh, I do believe that uh, the Republic of Liberia is a country of law. And uh, they do have system in place to protect the security of the country, the security and safety of the people and the resources of the country. So when we talk about dual citizenship, there will be laws in place to protect the security of that country, of our country. So I, I respect the view of the of my fellow Liberian, but I do believe that Liberia is a country of law and gradually, you know, we see it. You can't say that we, you know, you can't say we're not a country of law. Yes, we are a country of law. And that's the reason why we don't have dual citizenship, because the law is being implemented. We are a country of law. And that's why you can't just walk in and do anything you want to do, you're going to be put in jail. Yes, we are a country of law. That's the reason why when you are appointed and you go to the, the, the Senate and you say you, are, you, you hold a, a passport of a foreign country, you cannot hold that position. Yes, we are a country of law. That's the reason why we had dual citizenship. You cannot own a land in Liberia. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. It's a question of how we implement the law. Yes, we do. All right. Also, uh, a question here from a, not a question, but comments. Real man say the Indians and the Lebanese, you know, to make reference to the Indians and Lebanese owning businesses in Liberia. The Indians and Lebanese do not own land in Liberia, yet they do investment and are making money. That's a comment from a real man. So let me see another one from uh, Moses Mount Richardson. Okay, I, I, I missed that. But again, uh, we are almost about to uh, draw down the curtains. But before we do that, if we still have a uh, Okay, Augusta Williams say, I don't see your argument, not only Liberians living in Liberia bring development and investments. Diaspora Liberians contribute immensely most of Liberian development and investment. What do you make of it? Uh, can I answer that? Yes, yeah, it's for you. Yeah. Well, you see, this whole thing about that uh, money coming from the United States to Liberia, Liberia, Liberians in the diaspora, sending money to Liberia, exactly correct. They are sending money to Liberia, that is true. And uh, let me commend them too for doing that. When I was in the United States, I was doing the same thing. Let us commend those who are. Because the United States, particularly, is a very difficult country for those to land of opportunities but it's difficult. A lot of people wake up, go on a job, like two jobs, sometimes three jobs, and whatever they make, they take some to send to Liberia. That is 
commendable, and I thank them for that. But although, is that, does that qualify for one to become a dual citizen of Liberia? They would have still send that money anyway. Either the dual citizen or permanent resident or just in America visiting, they would have done that. It's the desire to send some money home to help their family members. But the law is the law. All right. Because you send money into Liberia, and therefore, you Liberia should just the law is that in, in the book should be banned. I, I, I get that, Mr. Mr. Wetty. Before the program, we conducted a, a pool in uh, the focus on Liberia chat room, asking if you support dual citizenship. Of the, those who participated, we have like. 80% who said they support dual citizenship. Uh, we had 10% against dual citizenship and another 10% support dual citizenship, but with conditions. What was interesting in that poll was all those who opposed dual citizenship came at those who are currently living in Liberia. Does that mm -hmm. concern you that people living in Liberia don't, don't like you know, on a large, for the opposition of dual citizenship is coming mainly from people that are currently living in Liberia. And how you hope to address that? Yes, uh, thank you very much for your pool. I think your pool is absolutely correct. It reflects the, the daily reality in Liberia. So that's absolutely correct. Uh, the people on the ground, you know, the uh, resentment or the resistance dual citizenship is very high. How we, are, we intend to do that, we intend to our people to encourage them to carry on campaign and educate them on the benefit of dual citizenship. Uh, this is not an event, it's a process. And gradually, we are hoping that uh, they will understand. But let me add, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the back wall or the impact, I mean, the, uh, the issue we'll be having is that we have never had a national leader to take our case. You know, in, in Liberia, we believe in leadership. We believe in our people speaking. Yes, President Eddie Johnson Salif said she supported dual citizenship. She spoke about it on the national radio. She did everything. But Salif never took that as a leader to invest her political capital in this issue. So we had never had a national icon to take the lead. Now, President, we are came up on January the 22nd of this year, President, we had said that he supports dual citizenship. And I tell you one thing, since President Ria mentioned that, they have changed the mind of some people. So we are hoping that President Ria with political capital can help us to sell this idea. And we believe that he can help to change mind. He can, he can help to tell our people the benefit of dual citizenship. So if we can have President Ria and his administration to help us in this campaign, we strongly believe that our people will get on board. So, yes, we agree with our Liberian brothers and sisters on the ground. But we also believe that if we have national leaders, the president, we are who have agreed, we believe that our people will find sense, they will find reason to join this campaign. Your spool is absolutely correct. And we know that it's a problem in our this strategic role. And that's why we've been trying to tap national leaders to help us in the direction. And we're hoping that President we are can be that person to sell our dual uh, uh concept and see how we all can have a common ground. Look, we all are Liberians. Look, we all are Liberians. Yeah, I, I get that. Our time is running down. Let me go to Mr. Yanfo with that same pool. Yes. Mr. Mr. Yanfo, what, yes. what is happening in Liberia for which those mainly opposed to dual citizenship are from Liberia? And you are there. What are you seeing? Yes, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised that the large number of, of Liberians in, in, in the United States uh, support uh, dual citizenship. You know, they, 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 they have the right to do that. You know, so I'm not surprised at all. But I'm not even surprised at the, the, the reaction from Liberians who, who do not seem to support the, uh, dual citizenship. And, and let me say here, according to according to 
the Constitutional Review Committee now. This was set up by the Ellen Johnson Sally uh, government. Majority, majority of Liberians do not support dual citizenship. Majority, majority does not support dual citizenship in Liberia. Now, in Liberia now, okay? And, and let me say this in regard to my brother uh, expression that uh, there is a lack of political will uh, in the past government, et cetera, and all that. I don't buy that too much. I don't buy that, I don't buy that. Uh, let's take the Sally administration. And I said before that on a whole administration, this campaign for dual citizenship uh, uh, came into process. The lead champion, the lead campaign itself went out and, and supported dual citizenship. So the, 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 in the Senate, of the last before, before, the, 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 the chairman of the Unity Party, who was Sherman, who was not Senator, Bonnie Sherman, who was not Senator, supported dual citizenship. Now, this was an individual in the Unity Party party chairman supported that. The vice president, uh, Ambassador Boycott, supported that. A lot of individuals, well, uh, uh, the, the vice, vice president, current vice president, uh, this, uh, this excellency of uh, Jewel, uh, uh, Howard Taylor, supported the word citizenship, okay? Now, the current administration, uh, President we are. Uh, in his address, uh, you know, call for dual citizenship. Okay, but this right. is the thing. He also called for 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 uh, non-Negroes, etc. So he did three things. Three, I'm gonna say three things in one okay. row. But you uh, know the reaction. You know the reaction. The reaction is not why a lot of people will say that it is good. A lot of people do support that. And the, and the reaction is, is national. It's not because you have a president who is popular. The uh, uh, president Yang is very popular, but not about the issue, about a citizenship issue. It is, I don't think so. Okay, Th thank you. We we uh, we will soon be winding this down, but uh, we'll go to Daniel. We have uh, we in the uh, Metro Atlanta area. We have a death in our midst. We want to acknowledge that. So uh, we will be. We, there's an uh, announcement here for detail for someone who uh, who passed away in our community. But while uh, Daniel is reading that, I want you to uh, get prepared for your final push to sell your argument why you are for or against dual citizenship. And I want my audience to, uh, at the end, at the end of the, of the last statement, I want you to vote. Tell me uh, on, on Facebook who you think won the debate. Just one word, out of for or against. And we're gonna tally the result. Danielle, to you. Yes, and we'd like to uh, share our condolences with the Lawrence Toomey family. Uh, Mr. Lawrence Toomey uh, passed away recently, and uh, there will be a farewell fundraiser here in Atlanta on the Saturday, the 29th of September at Rhodes Jordan Park. And the family is asking um, for help with food and drinks for the fundraiser. The wakekeeping will be Friday, October 5th from 8 to 10 p.m at the Gregory B. Levitt and Sons Funeral Home in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, the funeral service will be on Saturday, October 6th at 12 noon at St. Edward's Episcopal Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And burial will also be on Saturday, October 6th in uh, Buford, Georgia at the Broadlawn Memorial Gardens cemetery. Um, and the repast will be at the same church, St. Edward's Episcopal Church in 
Lawrenceville, Georgia. And we will post this information on our page um, and it'll have everyone's name and contact number to help with the events and uh, contributions. Okay, so back to you, Dennis. Thank you, Danielle. Now uh, we did our coin toss and uh, we want Mr. Dagwanyano Kia Nyafo to go first for one minute. Tell us, uh, wrap up your comments why you are against dual citizenship and what you want Liberians to do as a result. Thank you. Thanks again, uh, the organizer. Uh, as I stated, that I'm against dual citizenship. Dual citizenship is unconstitutional. Liberians who nationalize in foreign countries can return to Liberia and reclaim their citizenship. The war is over. There's relative peace in Liberia. They can return and do the right thing. They can regain their citizenship. They can come and gain, regain their property. They do have this in Liberia. They can come and vote in Liberia after deciding or declaring their, their uh, citizenship in Liberia and regaining it and denouncing their citizenship in foreign country. They can come and control Liberia because Liberia is where they were born. And I'll say this, I think if you live in the United States, for many years like I have and still have, after so many years, you want to come to Liberia and live in Liberia. And I think if you will receive the other social security or investment or, or, or retirement and receive about $2,000 a month, you can live in Liberia as a king, I tell you. You can enjoy Liberia and you can have a good time in Liberia. You don't need to have social security or you have uh, retirement benefits. If you have some business idea or own a business or want to bring a business to Liberia, you can have that. You can live in Liberia better. For younger people, live there, enjoy and get education, but Liberia is home. That way you can have, enjoy your life. You can own property, but not in the United States. You can have mortgage, pay mortgage. And after three months of not paying, you're in trouble. The bills is high. But in Liberia, you can live like a king with the income that you have or you can receive in the United States, or you can live in Liberia. You don't, own, you don't need to for the government, but you can become an employer and you can enjoy Liberia. It's living in Liberia until you're ready to go to heaven, just like my brother uh, said. And I enjoy having a meeting with him. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wetty, your uh, final comments. Why you support dual citizenship? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, uh, our Liberians and friends in the uh, cyberland. We do appreciate exchanging idea with you as you listen very clearly. My opponent is siding with me on our advocacy on the issue of land ownership. Uh, he admitted that yes, if you naturalize in another country, you cannot own a land. You cannot own the land of your father. You cannot own the land of your mother. You cannot own the land that belongs to you. My opponent is suggesting that you can bypass the law by having the land turned over to your sister or to your brother. Yes, you can do that, that way you claim it. But what if I pass away, what happened to the land? It can go on to my, to, my, to my child. So you need to pay very good attention. Very good attention. My opponent also told you that yeah, a woman in Liberia cannot pass a citizenship over to a child. So a Liberian woman that have a child uh, from point now in Liberia, that child is not a Liberian. My opponent admitted that that's the law. And that's the law we want to change. We want to change the law of land ownership. We want you to be able to own the land of your parents. Not because you are born in Great Britain, you are born in America, you are born in Japan, you are born in China, you are now a Liberian. You are a Liberian and you have the right to own land. Land ownership 
equals to development. The next thing is that the relationship will enable you to return home and share your resources, your brain, your skills with fellow librarian. We all are librarian, and there's no reason why we should be excluded. The Ghanaians are successful. The Nigerians are successful. The seven Luna, we just came from war. We all came from war, and they're very successful with worthiness. So in the best interest of modern Liberia, the promised land, dual citizenship is the path to our future. Dual we, we live in a global war. It is okay for a Liberia who's not a, who has a dual citizenship to come to, to play for the national football team. It is fine, but it is not fine for that person to perform another job. It is okay that you can call the players out to play on the national team. My fellow Liberians, ladies and gentlemen, the promised land is ahead of us. And only we Liberians can develop that country. There is no reason why I cannot own a land in the place of my parents. Thank you very much. All right. That was good. OK, so uh, thank you. Let me see. Let me check our online polls as to who won the debate. But for those who are watching us on Facebook, they are. But uh, before before we, we go to our online poll, I want to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yanfo and Mr. Wetty, for taking time of your busy schedule to be here with us. We want to thank all our viewers on Facebook and all those listening to us by the World Wide Web. We, want, we really appreciate your time. This is our second in our series of opposing views. We've been discussing the uh, Liberian dual citizenship, Mr. Wetty and Mr. Yanfo. Next week, we're going to have part two of War Crime Court by popular demand. We had a debate on War Crimes Court, and since then, we have been inundated with calls and emails to have part two of the debate because people were very, have very strong opinions about that and they want that to continue. Who are we to say no when our audience wants it? So next week, we're going to continue on opposing views and that will be on the war crime court. All right, for those who, who responded, we have 90% say, Mr. Wetty won the debate, and 10% say Mr. Yanfo won the debate. That's for the few, that's for the people that responded to the poll on Facebook. But once again, we want to thank you ever so much. Danielle, your concluding statement before we close the broadcast. Thank you, Mr. Ja. First, I want to say um, happy birthday to you. Uh, we didn't say that earlier, but uh, so happy birthday to you, Mr. Ja. Um, Thank you. And we know you turned 16 today, so. <laughs> That's a 16 um, billion dollar. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> we're not doing that today. <laughs> um, Happy birthday, both. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, too. I did express that on Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, um, so my final thoughts. I will say that this is a um, topic that is very near and dear to my heart, uh, dual citizenship. Um, before, so I'll say this, my background is in uh, engineering. I went to undergrad for chemical engineering and then I went to uh, graduate school for management. And so journalism is not my profession. Um, but I do respect the profession and I understand that normally in general journalism, um, you don't give your opinion and you have to maintain an objective viewpoint. Um, but today I'm going to break away from that a little bit because I am very passionate about uh, dual citizenship. Uh, just to tell you a little bit more about myself before I give you my view. Um, I was born in America in 1987 to two Liberian parents. Um, 
my parents had every intention of taking their child to Liberia. My parents, I'm sorry, I get it's okay. very emotional about this. My parents were so passionate about going back home that earlier in my life, they didn't plant strong roots um, in America. I grew up in New York City, which uh, many of us who live in America know New York City is an expensive place. I grew up in Brooklyn to be specific. Um, at that time, 87, 88, 89, my parents had the opportunity to purchase homes in uh, New York. Like I said, it's a very expensive place, but it is a very democratic city. So there were programs for people to be able to purchase homes at a much, much lower rate. Um, and my parents said no, because they were going home. They, along with my aunt, who I grew up with in New York, they bought things. They were buying stuff for their home in Liberia. They bought things and they sent them on containers to Liberia. Uh, we all know that by 1990, things got really bad. So there was no going back home. And even then still, I know they had hope and they still didn't plant their roots in the US. So, um, you know, by the time I'm 10 and 12 years old, they realize, okay, maybe we need to actually purchase a home here. And by that time, you know, New York is really expensive. It got even harder for them to purchase a home. Um, all the time I grew up, my parents instilled a sense of pride in where they came from in me. Um, <clears throat> Yes, I knew about the war that was going on in their country, but they still brought me up to be proud of where they came from. So much so that once things got okay, I went to Liberia and I've been to Liberia many times um, since 2010. And what I can say is I love my people. You know, I wanna help my people. And for people to look at someone like me, uh, Mr. Weddy uh, mentioned um, his children. The truth of the matter is I cannot legally own land in my parents' country. I cannot. Yes, people will say, oh, who will tell you anything? No, no one will tell me anything today, but I don't know who's going to be elected tomorrow or 10 years from now or 20 years from now and decide that I don't have any legal right to this land and they can rip it from me. Who wants to sow seeds into a land that can be ripped from them at any moment? I hear a lot of arguments that, oh, the people who want dual citizenship are coming to for corruption and, oh, they want jobs. There are many of us who have no desire to serve in any sort of government position. We just wanna come and help our people. When I uh, went to Liberia in 2010, uh, December, I went to one of the, I'll say more popular supermarkets in Liberia. And uh, whatever I needed, somebody had to go get it for me. And while I was waiting at the counter, I was talking with a, a Lebanese uh, owner, or excuse me, I'll say a Lebanese employee. I don't know if he owned it. And I said, wow, I noticed that all of the supermarkets in this country are owned by Lebanese people. So I jokingly told him, you know what? I'm going to open a supermarket across the street from you, and um, I'm going to get you out of business. I'm going to bring the prices way down and all my people are going to support me and they're going to come to my supermarket and they're going to shut you down jokingly. And then he also told me, you try it. It will never work. He told me that he could, he could, <laughs> he can tell me that honestly, because that's the truth. I know that if I have to rent 
at an exorbitant rate in Liberia, it would be harder for me to offer a lower rate to my people. And like I said, I know your, your fears are valid, but um, we all are not coming to steal. We all are not coming for corruption. Excuse me. Some of us want to genuinely help. Some of us want to come and turn the whole thing upside down. I love to be able to open up a supermarket and make the prices reasonable so that way all Liberians can afford to buy something from the supermarket. It's just not fair. So I will say this. I want to ask the Liberian people to please consider dual citizenship, especially for children of Liberians who were born in the diaspora. We don't all want to come and steal. Some of us really want to help. And yes, by passing that, some of that type of law, there will be some bad apples in the bunch. But there are people who are in Liberia, never left, who are causing corruption. So just give it a chance. And I'm sorry I got so emotional, but uh, Mr. John knows how passionate I am about this. Um, there are many of us who love Liberia and want to be able to do more legally. So just please give some of us the opportunity. And thank you, Mr. Ja, for giving me this platform and the opportunity to share my view. Thank you, Daniel. And all I could say is, wow, because uh, I myself as I'm taking Um, we may have a uh, loss, um, Mr. Jai. I know his, um, his uh, internet connection hasn't been great tonight. Um, so again, I want to thank both of our guests for coming and sharing their opinion. Um, as Mr. Jai said earlier, we will be back next week with the part two for the um, War and Economic Crimes Court. So uh, we look forward to you guys joining us again next Sunday at six for that discussion. Um, so thank you everybody for joining. Thank you. Bye. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.